This is the Seven Figure Agency Podcast. Discover the strategies and techniques to grow a highly successful and profitable digital marketing agency with your host, Josh Nelson. All right. Hello and welcome. Really excited to see everybody today. Really excited about today's session. You know, here at Seven Figure Agency, we're really we're focused on helping you land clients, deliver great results, and retain the clients that you have so that you can scale a truly successful and profitable digital marketing agency. Um, and really, the, the first part of that equation is really important, especially in the kickstart phase, especially in the startup phase in the business. Um, even once you're out of that, you have to have a consistent strategy to get appointments, land new clients, and grow the business, right? And you know, the, the, the game is constantly changing in terms of what we can do to get in front of our ideal prospects, to get their attention, to, to land clients. Uh, and so I'm always looking for like, what are the best tools? What are the best resources? What are the best strategies and approaches to get in front of the right prospects in your niche to get their attention to land clients? And so I'm really excited today to be joined by Joe Troyer and Matt McQuinn. Type Joe in the comments, guys, if you're excited to have Joe with us today. And uh, really what we're going to be talking about is how you can leverage some unique tools to really um, get better data. Because when you've got better data, you can put together better messaging, you can get better attention, and ultimately you can get the deals and opportunities that you're after. So uh, just give me a one in the comments if you're ready to rock and roll, and I'm going to hand things off to Joe Troyer and Matt McQuinn and let, let these guys run with it today. All right, ones stacked coming in. So Joy and Matt, uh, Joe and Matt, let's do this. Perfect. Well, I just want to say thanks. Uh, firstly, Matt, for, for getting me involved in this session. And then obviously, Josh, for having us all involved here. Uh, we're really looking forward to today. Matt, you want to say hello? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, guys. And thanks, Josh, for the warm intro here. Um, so many of you guys I've met before in passing and messages, however it may have been, um, but a ton of names I've never seen in my life. And I know that for sure. So we're excited to... Uh, kick this off and uh, we're going to touch on a whole bunch of things. But what you're going to walk out with at the end is a strategy that really gives you the ability to um, get an edge above everybody else with something original that really sets you as the authority, which is a big part of Josh's program, as you guys know. Um, and we're going to show you two tools that make that really easy to do it. And then at the end as well, I'm also going to show you guys um, some of the data points in addition to this that you can leverage in your sales process that are really easy, low-hanging fruit that nobody else has. And I can almost guarantee that. So I'm uh, really excited to jump right in. And, and uh, Joe, I'll let you kick it off with the slide deck from here, brother. Yeah, lots of technical issues. Um, let's kick it off. Let's talk about uh, first before we go too deep. Uh, we're going to make sure we give you guys a strategy that you guys can walk away with today, not just like, hey, you should be doing marketing. Hey, you should check out our tools, but we really want to over deliver. We want to give you something that's working for our members, uh, both Coldlytics combined and inside of PPC Ad Lab, uh, and a strategy that you guys can run you know, month in and month out in your agency, and really something that you guys can repeat, right? A system, I think one of, one of the great things in seven-figure agency is just it's, it's not systems that you run one time. They're systems you build, they repeat, they get you clients every month. You know, that's a beautiful thing. And we wanted to make sure that, that we brought you another system today that you guys could plug into your agency. So let's talk first and foremost, like just for anybody that doesn't know uh, what Coldlytics does, Matt. Yeah, awesome. So a um, little bit of background on me, guys. I think this really is kind of the, the why behind the business. I come from an agency background. So I went to school for marketing, came out as a director of marketing, did a couple other things in between before my last career job that uh, really led to the formation of Coldlytics for me and now my co-founder, Richard, who uh, he's in London. So London's like shut down for the Queen's funeral today. He's not on, unfortunately. Um, but with that said, um, I work in an outbound agency where I have sent more than 3 million cold emails and messages to people. So I I've seen a whole lot of what doesn't work and I've seen a pretty good amount of what does work too. Um, and I think anybody would be lying if they said most of what they did was good. You learn through that trial by fire process of what converts and what doesn't. And then you double down and try and maximize that stuff, right? And that's how every campaign starts is you go into it with a hypothesis and hopefully you hit those metrics and then you just iterate and improve it since. Well, the biggest problem I ran into uh, running campaigns through my team or for my own clients as well um, was really being able to find the right people consistently. And it didn't matter if we bought a good database. It didn't matter if we hired researchers from anywhere. Um, it didn't matter if we scraped our own data. There were still problems with the data. Um, so Coldlytics kind of consolidates all that. What we do is we take a beginning source or your 
um, ideal customer profile, basically. And then we build kind of a model of, of companies. And we say, okay, all these companies seem to match what your agency is selling to. Now let's send this to our human research team who's going to go out and actually mine these data points and find the contact information that's not even in you know the uh the d7 lead finders or seamless you name it um because it's being researched from scratch so it's the freshest data you can possibly get and it's turned around in 24 hours that's our goal so um, that's a little bit about the background of why colytics exists and what we do um, and happy to answer more questions on the on the end and give you guys more resources later perfect man that's a that's a great synopsis so i actually met uh, Matt, because of Josh, right? Josh was like, hey, you should check out Colytics. They're doing some really cool stuff. Started chatting with Matt, showing them what we do over at PPC Ad Lab. And they're like, hey, man, like, we, we really got to chat. There's an opportunity here. So uh, at PPC Ad Lab, we're really a competitive analysis tool for Google Ads. And we work really, really well at a hyper local area. You can, for example, with the tool say, show me every advertiser that bids on the keyword uh, plumber in the uh, in the Tampa city or within this specific zip code. And I want you to check once a day, twice a day, on the top of every hour, every 15 minutes, whatever profile you set. And then we're gonna grab all this data together for you. And so above and beyond being a competitive analysis tool, most of our agencies users really find the most value using it as a prospecting tool. So you can see why very quickly we could outreach to who we think are the best prospects in the industry, the ones doing Google ads, right? They're spending money. They're a little bit more educated than the rest of the market. Definitely, you know, something that we use as a, as a filter uh, for qualification to go after prospects. And, uh, and inside of Ad Lab, we send multi-part email campaigns and we're able to, to, to really personalize those messages uh, with great merge, merge fields based upon what we found. So we can say like, hey, Mr. Prospect, uh, we found that you're running one ad for Tampa Plumber, right? But we see your competitor, abc.com, is running 34 different ads that they're split testing. Would you like to see a copy of all their ads? Who thinks their prospects would find that valuable and raise their hand and like be be wanting to have a conversation with you, right? So we started working together with Coldlytics, again, because of Josh. But here's the thing, like at the end of the day, we all know in some businesses, it's almost impossible to get through the gatekeepers. And you really got to identify a core contact, right, of who it is that you need to target in that business in order to actually get your message heard and actually get to a decision maker. So maybe if you're in dental, maybe it's like the practice manager, right? If, if you're an attorney, maybe there's an in-house marketing person, but you guys know in the niches that you're going after who those people are. And the thing I love about Coldlytics and, and PPC Ad Lab is we can use everything we just talked about with PPC Ad Lab, but we can bring Matt and his team in and they're fully integrated in the tool. And you can say, all right, great, Ad Lab, you found me all these advertisers. You have this great data for me to outreach with, but Matt, I need specifically the office manager. I need you to make sure that they're doing over you know, seven figures a year. And I need the office manager's email and a personal cell phone if you can find it. If not, the office number is fine, right? And Matt and his team will take care of the rest. Can you guys see the value in that? Like to me, this is next level. Like nobody has this data. And, and that's why I'm so excited about our partnership together. Um, did I leave anything out, Matt? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, we're just I getting think, uh, that, I think it's I think it's important, guys. You know, the, you know, like the whole key is we choose a niche, right? And we want to position ourselves as the go-to expert in that space, right? And then we go out and we we do outreach, what's like sending out content making offers, trying to get hand raisers, right? We show you guys a lot of the strategies that work well in the program, but there's two things you're looking for. Um, you're looking for the actual decision maker, right? And you're looking for prospects that have already shown a propensity to spend. And it's getting easier to find the decision maker. Obviously, Coldlytics does that really well, right? And instead of like using D7 Lead Finder, having anonymous contact info information, you have the, the name of the person, you've got their main email, but what's much harder to figure out is that propensity to advertise, right? And that's kind of the secret sauce for accelerated growth, right? If you go after all of the plumbers, in my case, we would like we would we would send a hundred emails and have like two companies that were a good fit that responded, right? Because even if they did respond, if they don't already spend money on marketing, they don't have that propensity to advertise. That's going to be like pushing a rock uphill. But the secret sauce is if you can find those people already spending money and align yourself with your unique proposition, 
it's, it's pushing the rock downhill. It's easy for them to say yes to you. And that's what this is all about, really getting you access to the decision maker in your niche, but also finding those, you know, those exact fit prospects that are already spending money, that have already shown the propensity to advertise that makes everything work. So I just want to interject with that, Joe, because I think this is, this is really exciting stuff. I think those two things are absolutely key. A third thing that we found with, with PPC Ad Lab that we didn't really expect is that uh, prospects have never seen this data before. They've never been outreached with this message before. So it's fresh. And what we found from our users and from people in the tool every day, like really making their living prospecting inside of Ad Lab is like, they're, they're saying like, this finally gives me a message that my prospects actually appreciate, they resonate with, and they actually want to have, right? Where we never like had this before. We were always chasing and fighting and trying to have conversations that like they didn't even want to have with us. So I, I agree with you. Those two things are major. And, and also this third thing is, is definitely new. All right, so before we go any further, like we're not here to talk about the tools. Like we're gonna give you guys a case study. We're gonna give you guys an example, something that we're implementing right now and our clients are too, that's working really, really well. Uh, we just landed a $2,500 a month client. Uh, that's an enterprise client using this exact strategy. We just got featured on a podcast. Uh, we just spoke in front of uh, a group of 75 local business owners using this strategy. Um, and we got included in an industry newsletter. Okay, so we're going to be sharing kind of a tactic and a campaign that's working really, really well for us to create uh, what we call thought leadership. All right. So uh, what we wanted to do, again, is, is give you guys something that you could run with, a campaign that you guys could implement and, uh, and really uh, take off with. Does that sound good? Is that, is that a good use of our time instead of us just talking about here's, here's a couple more screens of Coldlytics and a couple more screens of AdLab? Wanted to make sure you guys got a ton of value. All right, good. So... What we're going to talk about is how you guys can employ thought leadership strategies. And really like what we want to do is we want to look at how are the HubSpot, the Gardeners, and the MailChimps of the world, how are they doing this? And then like how do we, how do we follow in their footsteps without spending the, the hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars on PR to, to be able to get to where they are? And, and really our goal is to be able to turn thought leadership into hot prospects. Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys like this one-time effort that you guys can leverage and then really evergreen to win clients for up to a year. And then I'll teach you guys at the very end um, this, this little thing that I call the self-perpetuating buyer frenzy, uh, which I really think is the key to like routine sales and making this work on a month-to-month, week-to-week type of basis to get new clients uh, and to get recurring clients, clients that maybe you've lost, come back and consider doing business with you guys again. So we've all seen like these, these big companies like HubSpot doing thought leadership where they put out like some type of report like this, right? Where it's like the marketing statistics report of 2022. And they just put this one out. This is an example of what's inside. Like it's graphs, it's charts, it's data. Um, but you guys know me. Like if, if you see me on a webinar before, you've interacted with me before, I'm all about the, the truth, the facts, right? Like I'm brass tacks. What's it worth if I went through all the labor to create this? Like what kind of outcome am I going to get on the other side? Uh, for those of you guys that don't know HubSpot, total revenue for 2021 was 1.3 billion with a B, right? Huge, huge revenue. And when you look at these guys and really dissect it, um, they're, they're getting about $7.3 million in organic traffic every single month right? And the way that they're getting that traffic is because of their thought leadership content pieces. These things have so much press mention. They're spread around like wildfire. And you can see here some links from Ahrefs linking to it, like literally 17,000 websites linking to the one that I just shared with you. So when that happens, right, you create something that goes viral like that. Lots of people are talking about you, but you also get this SEO impact. Uh, as well. So just check in real quick. Um, how important do you guys think uh, HubSpot's 1.3 billion a year in revenue is, is, uh, is thought leadership on a scale of one to five? I'm curious. While you guys are doing that, here's another example. Here's MailChimp doing it, right? Looks very similar. Again, what's inside, right? Stats, graphs, data. All right. Lots of good feedback in the chat. Perfect. Um, and Matt, if you see something in the chat and you want to call out, man, please stop me. Um, yeah, so what makes, 
Okay, perfect. What makes a good thought leadership report, right? So let's think about how you can do this in your agency. What are the things that you guys would have to do to have a similar impact in your business, in your agency, in your niche? Um, obviously, we want it to be highly relevant to the audience that we're going after. Okay, We want it to be time specific, right? So that there's a natural end date, a time that it's best. There needs to be ur urgency and scarcity. It should be data-driven. Um, and you should definitely have some type of user opt-in or action required to get access so that we can all follow up and, and make some sales. Um, and you want the piece itself to not be salesy, but also position you in a light where they're raising their hand and saying, yes, I'm interested in Google Ads. Yes, I'm interested in this benchmark report. Yes, I'm interested in you helping me. Um, and obviously, you want to make sure that it's better than what's currently out there in the marketplace today. So what bench, uh, what results do benchmark reports produce? Uh, really for me and, and what we've seen so far, we've seen a lot of leads over an extended period of time. We're able to use this. We're able to reuse this. Um, obviously, we showed the example just a couple of minutes ago where like this is the primary traffic method for brands like HubSpot. And in our own testing in under a week, you can see the, the results here. We got a niche podcast interview. Uh, we got featured in a monthly niche newsletter article. We landed a $2,500 a month client. The interesting thing about that $2,500 a month client is, uh, is all that we had to do is set up a couple of jobs inside of PPC Ad Lab, hit go, share the link with them, and they're paying us $2,500 a month. So by the way, PPC Ad Lab is white labelable. You guys could quite literally do the exact same thing, sell marketing intelligence in your niche, in your vertical. Um, you guys are all familiar with like the the uh, the grub hubs of the world and the delivery services of the world that like bring you stuff, right? It was in that niche. Uh, big client, if I said their name, you guys would all know who they are. Um, and landed us a speaking engagement to uh, a niche business owners association. So I'm sure you guys are thinking, yeah, like this sounds great, Joe, but... Reports like these are, are really, really expensive to produce. It's going to take my team uh, a lot of time. And I would really say, yeah, they, they were maybe rather expensive to create, but I'm going to show you guys how to create them very quick and easily using data that nobody else has. So how do you become the hub spot of your niche? That I want, that's what I want you guys thinking about. How could you guys create a big piece of data that all of the people in your industry, let's say for Josh, all the plumbers, all the HVAC people doing marketing would raise their hand and say, I'm really interested in that. That's data that nobody else has. So you want to produce a benchmark report that the business owners in the niche care about. So again, you want to make sure that you're targeting their market. You want to make sure that you include their competitors. You want to include their rank. This is a big one right? Including them in that report, outreaching and saying, we just did this big data analysis report. Uh, here are some of the findings. And oh yeah, by the way, you're included as number 34 in this piece of research data that we did. Um, how they can win and how they can make more money from this. And then uh, the end is, is how we're really evergreening this and self-perpetuating it. We're, we're doing updates to this report on a monthly and quarterly basis, which gives us the opportunity to remarket this back out to the audience again and again and again. And we're finding people keep raising their hand. And as they've seen one, they've seen the second quarter, they've seen the third quarter, um, we're closing them for bigger and bigger deals inside of our business. So really, you only need, uh, I held up two fingers, you only need three things right? You need data to report, number one. You need a page to sell it and to capture leads, and you need a follow-up process to convert. So the data is really, really simple. I'm sure you guys can tell where the data is coming from. The data is coming from ppcadlab.com. So when you set up a job, you can say, I want to run a, a, a job for the keyword plumbing. We talked about Tampa earlier. Let's use the Tampa market. Or you could say, hey, I want to do a report for the whole state of Florida. Well, I want to do a nationwide report and let's pick the top 30 metros in, in the nation and let's go after those, right? So you can kind of niche this down how you want, but here's a sample of the data, right? So plumbing, marketing, online, advertising, benchmark, Q2 2022. If you made one of these for your own niche and it had data that quite literally none of your competitors had as marketing agencies and none of these plumbers had. How many of you guys, how many of you guys think that this would be a standout marketing piece in your agency? Cool. So check this out. Like um, you know, total competitors 202, 
um, total unique ads, 2087, okay, ad extensions, and this whole page is white labeled. Okay, so you can click on each of these tabs. You can brand this to your business. We show all the advertisers' ads, all the keywords we found. Uh, this next screen is all about the competitor's visibility, right? So in the marketplace, who is seen the most amount of times? And when you hover over this and click on Angie, uh, it'll give you more details. You can even take this and you can embed it into your own page, right? So the graph keeps staying updated as we find more data. Uh, the top seeing competitors' ads look like this. And again, we can embed this right into our report that we give the customers. So again, you only need three things, the data report, a page to sell it and capture leads, and a follow-up process. And this is just an example of the landing page that we created. Okay, so we went after uh, kitchen designers. And this graph is embedded right from PPC Ad Lab. The top results, right, with the competitor's ads and prominence, these are all quite literally embeds right out of PPC Ad Lab. And this stays up to date with our job running. Okay, for, for those of you guys that are that are ninjas with Go High Level, that's what we use to build this page. Embeds are really simple to do. Um, and we put them in a nice uh, little sales process and sales funnel for us uh, that connected right into our existing flows inside of Go High Level. So here's an example of like the, the competitor report, the, one of them that we embed right into the page, and we call this the prominence. So this is who was found the most often. And what's really interesting is to see how fast right? The numbers really start to drop off, right? So if we saw plumbingforce.co.uk a hundred times, right? Within six advertisers, there's only like 20% of the market share left. And this is what we're seeing across the board. There are way more advertisers than we ever imagined bidding in Google and competing against each other. And very, very quickly, the top competitors are outpacing the rest of the market and taking huge, fast majorities of the market share, as you can see how quickly this breaks down. And this is typically what we're seeing in a market, by the way. And so we're able to, again, quickly add this to our page using an iframe after a customer opts in. So we walk through it all, right? Data to report, a page to sell it, and then we need a follow-up process to convert. And quite literally, um, we use a follow-up process built right into Go High Level uh, with the with the stages. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. I know uh, you guys give away, um, I, I believe, some um, some snapshots of Go High Level already inside the Seven Figure Agency. And so, quite literally, you can do this in minutes, right? So, step one is like you go into PPC Ad Lab and you tell it to create a report. So you'd hit the button in the top left and you tell it how often do you want it to run. Do you want it to run every day? You want it to run every hour? And then like, when do you want it to stop? You want it to keep going? And then from what locations do you want to search from? And then what keywords would you like to include? And it's like literally that simple. And then step two is we automatically build a list of prospects for you guys to outreach to. So we integrate natively uh, with Hunter. Okay, then right on this screen as well, you can say, I want to send this to Coldlytics and have them put in their own data. Or you can say, by default, I automatically, instead of using Hunter, would like to use Coldlytics, right? And obviously, the advantages with, with Hunter, we get, um, we get an okay amount of personalized details, like a first name, a last name, an actual email, not just a catch-all. But we can't control who it is. Right. And then a lot of them are just catch all like contact at the domain. And we all know what those response rates are like when doing outreach too. Um, and then obviously we start driving prospects to the report page in any way that we like. We really find that cold email does really, really well. We find across a three, four part sequence that's really personalized with all the merge fields and data that we have that by the time somebody gets all the way through the sequence and we've used like Matt from uh, and Coldlytics, we can have like anywhere from a 75 to a 90% open rate. And then typically about one in three actually raise their hand and actually claim the benchmark report. So if you compare that to uh, most other cold email campaigns, I, I think you'll find that those numbers are, are pretty stellar. Um, so uh, Matt, you wanna talk about how we uh, use Coldlytics to 10X our results? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, just jump to the next slide for me and I'll transition it here. Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm just going to break it down into kind of three core pieces. Um, I'm going to show you guys really quickly just where you can get the uh, the integration set up to connect the two moving parts. 
Um, and our goal is to make this seamless for you guys and not some added thing you have to go figure out. So that'll be really quick. Um, I'm not even gonna ramble on that one. Um, then I'm gonna talk to you about the data that you can sell with that we give, um, both inside and outside of the integration with PPC Ad Lab. Um, and, and even that in and of itself, guys, I think is gonna get you working and then I'll take a moment to answer some questions on that as best I can for you. Um, and then I also have a, uh, a separate course that I wanted to give you guys. If you were on the last webinar, we gave it out then as well. Um, and it talks about another similar strategy that I used to really just get hyper-personalized with people. Um, it's a totally different approach, but it's similar in the nature of how personal it is. Um, so I just wanted to offer that to you guys for taking the time out of your day to listen to us today as well and learn. So uh, with that said, let's go over to the next slide, if you don't mind, Joe. Perfect. So um, Joe, are you able to select that and just drop that link for everybody in the chat? Sure. Perfect. Yeah. So you guys can bookmark this if you want for later. This video is, is about three minutes and it takes you 60 seconds or less to actually implement it. Um, and it really just shows you, hey, here's where the pieces are to click. Here's the buttons. Here's the copy paste and you're done. It's a seamless integration, like I said. So once you've got your prospecting uh, started through PPC Ad Lab and you're ready to reach out to that list, the next step is to then enrich that through Coldlytics. And again, that goes to our human research team, not just searching the web to see what's out there. Um, it's real people digging in to do this. Um, so let's talk about the data points that we provide. Now, we, we provide a ton of data points. These are four that I really wanted to highlight. And then I'm actually going to pull a couple more up and just kind of talk you through them. You're not going to see them, but I'll talk through them. So um, the first two are, are the Google and Facebook ad pixel. If you guys are selling PPC services, uh, you obviously are going to be giving yourself an enormous edge to talk to people who are already positioned to spend money on advertising, right? These are people that are already geared and oriented to the success of their business through advertising. If they installed a pixel on their site, they understand the value or they wouldn't have done it or paid their developer to do it. Um, so these two data points in and of themselves kind of excite me because I look at this as a marketer and I say, wow, I can look at this. And even if I know nothing else about the company, I can talk to that point. If I know nothing else, if you just gave me a name and the fact that I have a Google ad pixel, I could talk that guy's ear off for an afternoon, right? Just because just you can go from there. Because obviously that's something they care about. They invested that money, time, effort to set that up. And Meta's made it more and more confusing as time goes on. So if they got a Facebook ad pixel, it's because they wanted it. Um, let's go to page load speed. If you guys are doing SEO services, web design, web building at all, this stuff is huge, right? And it's not just their page load speed, you see everybody else who's also in their industry that you sourced. And you can say, hey guys, actually the average page load speed, you know, I just select the column and look at the bottom, it said average. It's like, it's so easy, such low hanging fruit for data that nobody else is possibly going to have. And so you can decide how much time to invest, whether you're going to do more of the account-based marketing approach where you're gonna say, well, I've got this dream 25 list. If I could work with these 25 people, I wouldn't have to work another day in my life. My team would have money coming in we wouldn't know what to do. We'd have to scale. Um, and those are the types of data points that you can really double down on and dig into. In addition to your broader outreach scale of emailing three to 400 people every month, like Josh's uh, program recommends for you guys to do so. Um, so with that said, uh, somebody says they're seeing a black screen. I just want to make sure everybody else can still see. Can you guys just put a one in the chat if you can see it? I think we just took it down. We'll put it back up again. Everybody else can see it? Okay. Awesome. Perfect. I um, mean, we can share this deck at the end as well. Um, and actually, Joe, I'll, I'll just share my screen here in a second to show you guys a sample of what some of this data looks like. So actually, why don't we do that now? See if I can jump in and share. Because um, it's really easy to talk about this stuff. But for me, uh, the irony of, of the business that we're in with the data side of the marketing world is that I hate data and I hate spreadsheets. Um, and I always tell people that because it's, it's funny that I do this for a living and that I have this, but yet it's the thing I hate the most. And that's why I'm in this business is because I'm actually not very good at spreadsheets. I'm not very good at, at sourcing data. I didn't used to be anyway. Um, and it was such an enormous pain that I thought, man, can somebody simplify this? Like, can somebody just put this in, in plain English, understand what I'm asking and produce the result? Like, how hard is that? You go to McDonald's, you order a cheeseburger, you get a cheeseburger, right? There might be the occasional error, but for the most part, you know what you get. And that didn't exist in the data sourcing world. It was like, oh, well, maybe if you select our filters, it'll be like maybe a plumber, but might be a wholesaler. It's like, 
<laughs> that's not helpful. I need to eat. I need a cheeseburger, not a food supplier, right? I don't need a grocery store. I need a fast food restaurant. And that didn't exist before Coldlytics, um, at least in my experience. So here's a couple of the interesting data points as well that I haven't even showed you guys before. Um, we are able to pull down the Google reviews and their average rating as well as uh, revenues. And this revenue column is something that we get pretty excited about if you guys follow us closely. This is comprised from at least three major public sources. So let's take Crunchbase, Zoom Info, um, oh, I don't know, just any, any of these other major guys that are out here publishing these um, revenue metrics. What you will see, if you were to Google, um, I don't know, take 7FA, if you were to Google 7FA's revenue, and if that's indexed somewhere, you'll see three massively different things. And the marketers, that's not very helpful because one guy will tell you this company makes a million dollars, the next guy's saying to me, 13 and the last guy said seven. You know, what do I do with that information? That's both ends of the spectrum. How big is this company? Are they $1 million company or $10 million company? Who is to clarify that? So what we did is we said, no more guessing. Let's take what these guys do. And typically, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole with you guys for a second on revenue. Typically, the way revenue is done is one of two ways. If it's a public company, it has to be submitted for the SEC. So that is accurate to, to the perfection of accounting. Um, however, most companies are modeled. And what that model is, is it's based on a whole bunch of figures that are publicly available to those platforms. And they say, okay, if they have more than five employees, if they have a website that's been established in such and such a way, we estimate this. And that's where you get the 10 million and the 1 million, and they're both accurate for 2022, according to Zoom Info, right? And you're like, wow, I paid so much for this. And somebody told me something very different that I also paid for. So we said, let's combine those and give you a weighted average of the Coldlytics revenue index, as we call it internally. So that's how we get to this number. This is, in our opinion, the most accurate way to try and estimate revenues. Um, I could talk about this all day because I've done a whole lot of research and tried to really correlate uh, statistics to data around revenue. Um, another one we can source for you guys is monthly organic traffic, right? Like these guys way up here. And again, this data is fictitious. I pulled columns from different sheets. So, you know, don't bother writing this down. Uh, so make a fool out of yourself. Don't do that. Um, the top one's got 10,000 and this guy's got a thousand, right? And if you see this in the list, you can say, man, your competitors, just as Joe showed, are, are way up here. And you guys are, are clearly missing the market. Here's where we step in and, and get you guys that edge and get you right to the top or whatever the service is that you're marketing to them. Um, there's a number of other things that I could go over really quickly. I'm going to stop sharing and I'll just talk through them. Just give me one second as I pull them up on my end. Um, give me a scale one to five guys. If five is like, Matt, this is really good, but it's a lot of information. Can you circle back? And if so, I'll stop for a quick Q and A. And if not, we'll wait till the end. Five clears my one totally confused. Okay. Mostly on the high end so far. So we'll, we'll save the Q&A for now, just to the end. Um, there's a couple other things that I thought you guys would find uh, quite valuable. Um, the, the last one, I guess, that I'll mention, just to keep it concise for this, for this presentation, is search position. So if you guys are providing us a Google Maps uh, search link, and you can pull back up the slide deck there, Joe, while I talk. Um, one of our top use cases that guys from 7FA are using all the time is they're going to Google Maps and they're searching for plumbers in Arizona or plumbers in Tampa, whatever it may be. Um, and then what happens is we go and we pull down all the Google business profiles and we try and match them up. We check keywords on their website, make sure they're actually plumbers and not wholesalers, for example. Um, and you can just skip to the next slide there, Joe. Um, and, and that's the type of, of detail and attention that we're giving to this um, for you guys. But the search position part is really interesting because you're searching a keyword term to get that data back. So if you're searching plumbers in Tampa, that is probably the highest intent search you're going to get um, for somebody needing plumbing services in Tampa. And so we can tell you where that company ranks. And when you have that data for that company, you also have the data for all their competitors that came up too. So you can say, we know where you are compared to the average. Here's the one, two, three things we recommend. In a cold email, nobody's getting these cold emails, guys. If you take that little bit of work and send those emails and that approach, guaranteed you are going to set your, your bar so high that people aren't going to open any other cold emails unless they're from you because it just won't it just won't compare and i know through all my experience i've seen a handful that came through like that to me and i was hard pressed not to send a reply if only because i was impressed by the amount of intelligence that was put into the email copy that was sent to me um, i'm in a space where data is exchanged every day i get cold messages requests emails all day long um, and 
so I get to see some of the good stuff and the bad stuff. And what we're trying to bring you here today in this webinar is the best of all the experience Joe and I have to date in scaling what you're doing through cold outreach and through the power of data. Um, so I can't drive that point home enough. Josh, if you don't, or Joe rather, if you don't mind copying and pasting this link, this is the course guys, it's free. Um, make sure that you use Josh's link because when you use Josh's link that uh, we put out at the very beginning in the chat, that gives you 50 additional credits if you sign up for Coldlytics totally on Josh. So uh, take advantage of that. Don't miss that opportunity. If you guys are whatever reason not seeing that in your account later, just message us in the web chat. And we'll take care of you. But with that said, I'll pass it back over to Joe. I mean, and we just kind of, I rambled over this, but why don't I, why don't I take two seconds, I guess, to dive into what that strategy was. Um, give me, give me one, if you guys want to hear the strategy now, or you'll just check out the course later, two for checking out the course later. Strategy, man. Everybody All wants right. the strategy. <laughs> okay. So this, this, this one works for some and not for others. So this is why I didn't make the whole presentation about this approach. All right. Love it. Everybody wants the strategy guys. So I was trying to kind of, kind of hack prospecting, um, especially in the early days of Coldlytics, trying to test and figure out what worked and what didn't. Um, now for us, we're in a very tech enabled space. We're talking to you guys, we're talking to agencies, we're talking to uh, accountants, not so much tech enabled, um, but they're still present on platforms like LinkedIn. And what I realized was um, just being part of the conversations that exist online was one of the first things that worked. Actually, that was how Josh and I originally got connected was through Facebook comments. Um, and I realized there's so much power what's going on in social media, but how do I possibly harness this for my cold outreach? Like what's the, what's the connection here? So I stumbled upon a post and, and I, I think it was named by a lady named Ashley Zakst. And I think she talks about outbound a fair bit, but I'm, I'm calling back on memory over a year ago now. And the whole post was talking about cold email strategy and what worked and what didn't work. And man, did it spark chat. And people had a lot of really interesting experiences and feedback that went into the comment section. And this was on LinkedIn. Um, and I said, man, there's no better place for me to talk to people with data right now. Cause this is, this is what this post is about. Like these people are talking about the pain point of which we created a business to solve, right? So if you can find conversations around your business, online. That's the first key step is identifying whether it's Twitter or LinkedIn or some public space that you can identify the people and the topic they're talking about, then double down and join in. So what I did is I commented and I put, I put out a valuable comment and I liked and I made sure I followed Ashley. Um, I copied the link to that post and there's a spot in side of Coldlytics for you to paste a LinkedIn post URL. And you, if, you, if it's not from LinkedIn, you can just post it into the other websites field as your source for this list to be built from. Then I emailed every single one of those people that I could get contacts for. And I said, hey, we both commented on Ashley's post in the last couple of weeks. She was talking about what does and doesn't work with cold email. Um, and it happens that I've sent over 3 million cold emails and this is my expertise. So I'd love nothing more than to pass that on to you if you're interested. We'd have a business that you guys could check out as well. Um, everybody loved that. And that's what stood out to me is I've never sent a campaign until that day that I was consistently thanked for. I've sent a lot that had the adverse impact where I had heard some very nasty things come back in an email. That's right, the fist came up, people were ready to fight, but not often do you get thanked for cold emails. And the one that stood out to me the most was I clicked through the company and there was a fairly large tech firm um, and the CEO got the email and he said, you know, I don't reply to this stuff. And I saw this email and I was really impressed just with the way that you, you really authentically reached out to me and I'm passing this on to our sales team. And I was like, well, if this is a value to other people and this is a value to me right now, there's no sense in me hoarding this information. It doesn't help me hold Lytics to keep this information myself. It might not work for you and that's okay, but it works for me and it works for other people. Um, so I put all this into a course to show you kind of the start to finish. Here's what the templates look like and the messaging we sent. Here's how to write your own. All that's in there, guys, and it's completely free. Um, so I hope that's valuable to you guys. Um, any any kind of, I'll take two questions. If you guys have any questions on that approach in the chat right now, I'll, just, I'll let a couple trickle in here. I love it. In, in every industry, there's always, there's always, um, there's always people in the forefront. There's influencers, right? Whether they're coaches, whether they run software companies, right? No matter, in, in every industry, there's these people, they run podcasts. And no matter what, somebody in the industry is on LinkedIn or on Facebook doing like engagement posts, right? And we all see um, case study posts, 
you know, com- you know, on Twitter, oh my gosh, it's, it's ridiculous, right? Um, you know, DM me this or, you know, put this in the comments if you agree or if you want this case study. So, you know, finding one that's relevant to you, giving that to Coldlytics and then finding all the email addresses, um, that's, that's a brilliant outreach strategy, man. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, we can keep rolling. I'm glad it appears it was clear as mud as I intended. So let's keep rolling. <laughs> All right, perfect. So let's wrap this up. So we talked about the steps one through three. Let's talk about steps four, right? So like once you get a prospect to raise their hand and say, yes, I want this like industry benchmark report. um, I think there's a couple key things that you guys can do to really maximize the results that you get. And so I want to share with you a couple of tweaks, a a couple of ways to amp up your results. So um, look, having a, a reason to email Having a reason to contact someone, having a reason to make an offer, having a reason to have urgency, having a reason to have scarcity is the absolute key, right, to getting a prospect to take action. So one of the things that you can do with these benchmark reports is you can put them out by quarter. Right, So you could say Q2, and then in Q3, the reason that you're outreaching, you're contacting them, you're trying to get in front of them, you're trying to help them, is because you have this new data. You have Q2's data is, is done. We just came out with a Q3 report. There's a reason for everybody to raise their hand right, and say that they're interested. right? And at the end of the day, having a reason is, is really, really key to authentically having urgency and scarcity. Okay, and most of your sales are going to happen when you get emotions involved and you have emotion and you have scarcity and urgency. So this is a way to build it in and how to literally take this from doing it once to doing it every quarter. Now you've turned this one-time machine into a quarterly machine. So build in a cadence of doing this every quarter and again, adding as much urgency and scarcity multiple times a year as you can, right? Josh is really good at doing this in his agency. Right, having webinars, having events, giving out data that nobody has. Think about how you can take this to another level and add in a couple more layers of urgency and scarcity, and you're going to see your sales skyrocket. So we like to create the report, do an initial promotion, right? The next quarter, just to visualize this, do a Q2 report or a Q3 report, end of the year recap, right? And so we go from again one time campaign to doing this quarterly. So this is exactly how we take this from, again, a one-year campaign, right? Doing it maybe once, maybe doing it every year to really creating a buyer frenzy out of it, creating a marketing campaign in the calendar that just recurs once a quarter, has the ability to double, triple, even quadruple your sales. So let's, uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the presentation. We'll open it up for q and I don't think Matt or I have a rush to go anywhere. We're happy to help you guys uh, give advice and general outreach, questions about uh, tactics or strategies or questions about the tools specifically. Uh, you know, we're here to help and to serve you guys. Uh, um, Joe, if you can jump in with that price point for the report. Yeah, so we have lots of different service levels at PPC AdBob. Um, so for you to do this strategy and create a report, you could literally use the, the $49 plan on the website. If you like want to white label it, you want to do a whole industry report, you want to run it across the whole United States, right? That would be like lots more checks, you'll need more credits, right? And so like a credit is like is one search. So it'd be like us checking on a desktop or mobile device, right? In Google uh, for a keyword that you chose and a location that you chose. Okay, that's one credit. So you can kind of do the math. You could do the 49. If you want to like do the white label, you want to do cold email outreach, then obviously you're going to need to do the latter. You can kind of choose uh, how how you want to kind of attack it. Uh, We have people doing the benchmarks in the $49 plan, then take our data, export it, right? And then use something like go high level to do more of the technical bits and heavy lifting. We have other people that are like, you know, I get confused by go high level. I get confused by technology. Like, let me just pay you and like, let me do everything inside your platform. So it depends a little bit to, uh, to the scale, uh, if that makes sense, Rob, but you get started, uh, for that $49 plan for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so Don follows up with a question is, if it's a broad report for a niche, what are you using for the location for this? How do you tackle location? 
Yeah, good question. So, so I think the best strategy is to do it um, by state or by like region, right? And the reason why is it's just more targeted. So let's take like the HVAC industry, for example. You know, if, if you're selling AC services or if you're selling heating services or if you have different types of year, right? Like the ads, the keywords are going to be very different uh, depending on where you're at geography wise. So, um, Don, I would think about in your niche, what seasonality means. Is it, is it the same for everybody or not? Um, I think the, the most bang for the buck would be to do a big benchmark report one time and be done. But a lot of times with seasonality, it, it kind of gives you false positives in the data, right? Like if Florida is advertising AC repair offers and the rest of the country is offering, you know, heating services, it's a little strange, right? So I would just think about the seasonality effect. Um, I, I like like the regional, like the South. If you took like, uh, if you took like even just Florida and did it in a report, a state, think about how many prospects you could nail that report to, right? We have some people that'll do like a national report too, and then say, hey, I'll set up your own report for you in your own state. And then they'll charge them for that, for like a personalized service and a personalized search. So it really depends um, on your niche, I would say, is, is the big thing I'd be thinking about. Okay. Awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll give Tammy a quick win here as well. Um, she says, is this able to pull PPC competitors targeting your client's brand name, like the search monitor 100%. can? Yep. Yeah. So right now, in, um, right now, we uh, we do a lot of competitor um, brand monitoring, brand protection campaigns as well. And so for all of our clients, we do this outside the box. Any of our agency clients will all automatically set up a campaign running on their brand name and we'll alert them if any competitors are bidding on their brand. So that's another really great use case besides just competition auditing or competitive analysis. Another one that you might not have thought of and I didn't think of, our users did, but um, we're, we're doing really, really well with right now is, uh, man, because you guys are all so smart, um, is, is franchises, right? So how many of you guys work with franchises? I'm curious. Any of you guys have like, you know, a franchise is a big part of your customer base? Well, this is, a sale to this is a sale to each individual franchisee and then can trickle up to the franchise award. Okay, each individual franchisee that you work with, they understand their territory. Okay, and you should be doing compliance monitoring for them, asking them what zip codes they can service, and then letting them know when their competitors are advertising in their zip code. Depending on the franchise, this is a really big deal. Um, in water damage, for example, we work with a franchise right now. Every infraction, every time a competitor's caught bidding, on a uh, on another franchisee's location, uh, it's a twelve thousand dollar fine. Cheapers. In our first ninety days helping them, we found thirty three times that one competitor was abusing this in their contract. So you think you think somebody cares when a competitor franchise is bidding on their name when they're paying that franchise back this money and they've paid to get in the franchise? It's huge. People get really emotional about this one. Great foot in the door strategy. I love it. Um, Dick asks, do you have a step by step for implementing the PPC Ad Lab strategy that you went over? Is there a place that he can check this out or that we can put up the slides for them? Yeah, we'll give you guys all the slides. Yeah. Um, we'll upload them or we'll have Josh upload them, whatever. We'll, we'll get with Josh afterwards and figure out what's the best, best strategy to get you guys the deck and you guys can have it. Awesome. Um, a couple of people are looking for the 7FA link. Guys, if you go through that link, sevenfigureagency.com for slash coldlytics, what it does is automatically track your account. There's nothing you have to do except for register for your account. So once you go there, it'll take you to the Coldlytics homepage. And when you sign up, it will automatically apply those 50 credits to your account that become available once you've subscribed to a plan. Um, and we do have a $1 trial for seven days. After that, it renews at $99 a month for 100 credits. Um, and that's that's the starting point. And then it scales with the economies of scale with, with sourcing more data at one time. So uh, the more data points that you're looking or rather the more data you're looking for in one go, the cheaper it gets for you to do that. Um, so if we have I love any other guys, questions, come in. I love that you guys do this, by the way. I didn't get to talk about this at the beginning. I should. 
uh, or I should have, but we used to train um, a whole team of outsourcers how to do what Coldlytics does, right? And like, to be honest, like the prices were almost the same as Coldlytics. The problem though is like Coldlytics has built in like a management team on top of it <laughs> uh, to QA the data, to make sure it's good, right? I had to be the manager. Um, I had to QA it all. And I got to tell you guys, it was often wrong. And often they weren't following our systems or weren't following our processes, right? And, you know, Matt and his team just keep adding more kind of data that they're appending. Um, and so it's just getting better and better and more built out and more built out. Like I, I haven't even seen half the stuff that you showed on that spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely an awesome service that you guys should be using in your business. A couple questions around where we can source data. If the country is primarily English speaking, we can we can usually source data. Um, once you get outside of the UK, US, and Canada, it gets really really sparse for finding direct contact lines. Um, simply because the data is just not out there in most cases. Uh, but with that said, we certainly can try, um, and we'll let you know if if there's a concern there whatsoever. Um, we've got a couple more links, and then already existing credits with cold links can be applied with. Uh, can it apply with PBC ad labs? Yeah, so the way that it works is uh, we're both based on credit systems. If you have enough credits to run your jobs inside of PPC ad labs, then PPC ad labs runs as scheduled and planned. And if you have enough credits in Coldlytics to build a list, then you've got those as well. So um, two separate trains, two separate tickets. We work together, we, we come to the same port. Any other questions we can answer for you guys before we pass this back over to Josh? Yeah, no problem. John said, uh, what price points do you typically offer the report to the clients at? So that's a really good question. Uh, yeah. What we train our users to do um, and our customers, our agencies that use the platform is usually that like the first sale is a tripwire type of sale, right? Um, and so it's like, it's just an easy price point to get the user to say yes. And then typically when they're setting it up for the user, they'd be like, all right, great. So they got the sale, let's say, in the industry or based upon their sales experience, typically those numbers can be like 300 to a thousand bucks, right? If you're working with a florist versus a, a personal injury attorney, those are two very different markets, right? And then your sales skill set should also be considered in there. Are you brand new building out an agency or like do you close $5,000 a month deals, you know, every day, right? Like obviously those two scenarios, you should be pricing two different things you know, charge what you can get away with and, and start where you're comfortable. You can always expand over time. Um, and then typically what we do is we call it an onboarding call. So they buy that one report in the onboarding call while we're setting it all up and walking through what to expect. Then we're going to use uh, that as an upsell slash cross-sell call. And uh, we run weekly calls at PPC Ad Lab as long as you're a member, kind of walking through our core set of strategies and what's worked well for our agencies. And, and we talk about the, the positioning, the pricing, cross-sell, upsell, and kind of how to do all of that stuff in there. Um, so there is more support besides just the slides. If you guys feel like if you want it, you need it, um, that's, that's the best place to grab it. New question you're probably reading there. Uh, can you just dive back into that uh, that strategy around franchises a little bit? Can you give a little more clarity yeah. on using your platform for that? Yeah. So in a franchise, um, franchises have territories, right? And so when you buy into a franchise, you're like, this is my territory. It includes, you know, these, you know, 10 zip codes or 35 zip codes. And um, you are the only one in the franchise that is allowed to bid on water damage or whatever the niche is and whatever the, the franchise's name is, right? You're buying the rights to that, okay? So naturally, when people are infringing on that, you know, competing locations, you know, the, the guy down the street that also sells the same thing as you, when he's competing with you on Google in your market in the zip code that you paid for, you as the franchisee, rightfully so, are going to get really pissed. Okay. Well, typically, if you look in the in the contract, um, the corporate, the the franchise or corporate is supposed to police that. The problem is, is like policing that's very difficult, right? Like the reason PPC Ad Lab has gotten so much exposure and it's just like exploded is because it's new data. It's never been seen before. Like the tools like SEM Rush and SpyFu and Espionage. Our data is like literally we've proven 12 times better. Okay, so like their, their tool set that they're using sucks. So now we can actually show them that this is a problem 
Um, this works really well to get in the door with individual franchisee locations. And what we find is like very quick, once we're in the door with three or four, then we're talking to somebody that like runs the state. Then we're talking to the marketing director at the whole franchisor. And then, you know, very quickly it's like, all right, can you sell this as a service for, for all of our members? Love that. Thanks. Thanks for jumping in with that. Um, and if you have more questions, we can definitely clarify. There's one here that uh, I think is really answered well through both our platforms. And the, the question is, any positioning idea you can share for running a paid ads agency, Google and Facebook to be specific, using Coldlytics? Well, the reason we actually partner together to put these platforms together is we saw both the power for both of us um, to solve this problem, for, especially for new agencies. So um, here's here's really the positioning angle that that stood out the most to me. And Joe may look at this from a different angle. We're both looking at PPC ad labs from two different sides, so he may add more color to this. But when I think about having a PPC agency, um, you're you're really trying to sell money to people. Like the pitch is actually pretty straightforward on what you're actually selling. The question is, do they do they buy it? Do they believe it? Do they understand it? See the value and have the urgency enough to pull the trigger, right? Um, so how do you get them from here to there? Most of these guys aren't even thinking about this stuff when you talk to them. How do you get them thinking about it? Well, there's nothing more agitating than a competitor who's doing better than you um, or doing something differently that you can do too and you didn't know about it until somebody showed it to you. So by going into PBC Ad Labs and saying, hey, I want PBC Ad Labs to search Google for plumbers or whatever it is in, in this particular area every every day of the week for the next two weeks and i want you to check two or three times a day you're going to get this massive report back of all the ads that are running in that space and then what you can do as the expert is look at that and say holy just like you gave me the example earlier like this guy's split testing 32 ads you've got one and you're wondering why you're coming to the bottom or, or getting put in the bottom of the page on google like what's happening why am i not getting those top ranks because you're not converting as well and you're missing the low hanging fruit. And if you watch those and generate those reports over time, you'll be able to look back and say, okay, we ran this test a month ago. Let's run it again a month later and then compare the two and say, well, wow, that company, they now have 16 ads. We can see which of them made it to the next round. They introduced a brand new other batch of 16. We're back to 32 again, but they're split testing. We now know if we're going to sell ads to our competitors, to their competitors, we're going to say, hey, look, Here's the details. Here's what other people are doing. You can piggyback on this strategy, strategy. And here's what we also see across other competitors in the market that they don't know that you do now because I gave that to you in this initial reach. So if you can do that, all you need to do is get the contact information. Joe's got some killer templates and strategies inside his platform, but you do need the data to actually talk to those people. It's great to have all this information. You can know the cure for cancer, but if you can't get it in front of a doctor or somebody that's going to, then it doesn't mean shit. So you need to be able to get through to the right people at the right time with the right message. This gives you the right content and the way to get it there. I mean, this is, this is the product, the delivery. You just need to be able to sell it through to the other end. And I, I do this on every webinar, guys. There's so much information here, so much. You're gonna walk away and you're gonna remember this much probably, hopefully more, but I always walk away with this much at best. And the thing that I always tell people is, is if you forget everything else that we've taught you here in this webinar, just go do something. Get out of your chair, stand up, shake your head, sit back down and go do something. Because we all learn all this information and then we just let it sit idle. I can't tell you the amount of conferences I've been to, webinars I've attended, and I don't know a single thing that I learned at any of those. Remember some cool people that I met, maybe one or two speakers, maybe. I've listened to dozens, but I don't know what any of them said. So you'll probably not take away most of what we've taught you unless you go and do something immediately. I don't care if you just work through it in a piece of paper afterwards, but do something to make the most of this time because you've committed an hour if you're here right now to do this. And that's an hour of time that you could be prospecting making money. So take whatever your highlights are, write them down, go plan some action, put it on your calendar so that way later this week, you're saying that hour I spent at the beginning was the best hour this month because I'm actually going to make money based on that hour I committed. Otherwise, we get in the cyclical process of learning information, thinking it's great, thinking it's going to change our business, and then we let it slide and we have to go learn more information to try and get that effect again. And we're just kind of chasing a feeling rather than a result. 
Um, so really make sure you guys take action on, on even a single thing that you learned today and you'll be better off for it rather than having just sat here and attended. Um, and again, we, we appreciate you guys and see that you're a startup. We're both startups as well. Most of you guys are in a startup phase, right? So we get the journey. We're in the journey with you just from a different industry, a different positioning. Um, but we both come from agency backgrounds. Joe's had his own agency. So I'm happy to answer any more questions, but I think we're, we're out of time. So if you guys have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either of us directly through our own websites or through Josh, and he can kind of put a question out to the group as well. We appreciate your time, guys. Joe, anything you want to add before we wrap up? No, man, I got I got to pay you as like my paid consultant, my 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 influencer, man. That was a that was the best pitch ever for PPC App Lab, guys. What do you think? Right? <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, that was like a ten, man. Thank you, much appreciated. Uh, no, I, I hope you guys got value out of today. You know, we wanted to make sure that we didn't just come in here and just talk about both tools and both softwares and what we do, but give you guys like something that you guys could take and run and actually implement with like a, a campaign that you guys could run instead of just, hey, here's some discount codes to our tools and we hope you guys like them. Uh, so I hope you guys take it, run with it. We'll get you guys the slide deck. If you guys need anything else, hit us up. Uh, both of us have live chat on our websites. I think best place to probably contact both of us. Um, and if you guys need us, we're here for you. Uh, we answer live chat. Um, let us know if you need anything. Thanks, guys. Appreciate have a great time, Josh. See you, everybody. See you, guys. See you, Scott. Scott Meadows, my man. Good to see you.